Hello Cinetech Geeks, this is James Gardner. It's been a while but I just wanted to show you this quick video about a nice little device that's affecting us as cinema installers. Now, you know, all this talk about IoT, all this IoT stuff, it's becoming more commodity every day and it's eventually going to affect us and some of the products we buy for cinema. And this is a product which I've seen that is one of those products and it's here. It's basically an IO device for controlling your lights and doors, etc., things like that. Now this device, uh, you can see it's very industrial in nature and a common device that we use in the industry, around here it's worth probably up to a thousand dollars to buy once you landed in Australia. I can buy five of these units for the same price and they're pretty much built just as just the same they've got the same sort of functionality they're just not as programmable as those those more expensive ones but you know what sometimes you don't want the smarts, the smarts to be in the little boxes the smarts are in the sound processes or the SMS's that you have and these are just sort of dumb little devices that need to control things on and off and just to show how easy it was to program this in um, for example you can see it here I just program I've got a, a um, uh, an IMS 2000 downstairs and you can easily see I can easily trigger it's very fast the light it's got lights on the front uh, normally open normally closed contacts along the side all really nice and the big thing even that the the more expensive one doesn't have this one can be powered by PoE and in most locations for me especially these days I, I always put PoE switches because I'm driving usually quite a lot of PoE devices for monitoring and automation of the locations like um, monitoring cameras and other pits and things like this. So here we go. Um, nice little unit. Its its interface is a little bit restrictive at this time. Uh, I'll quickly show you how to control it through um, programming it through an IMS 2000. It doesn't have a web interface and it can't pulse it. You actually have to tell it to go on then wait and tell it to go off. But I've been talking to the manufacturers and they're going to look at improving it to add those sort of features to make it even more applicable to um, people like us in cinema. The other, other issue, because this is such a light device, it doesn't have a multi-threaded connection protocol, so you can only have one, one device talk to it at a time. So if I'm opening it and talking to it from uh, one system and then another system tries to talk to it, it'll be blocked because it can only have one socket connection at a time. But that's usually not a big issue because you're only usually talking to it from one device at a time. Another reason I like to go with these sort of devices is because if you know it, it means that the IO device is a not connected or is not a critical system you can have multiple devices talking to the lights you could have different sound processes or different other audio visual systems talking to an IO controller uh, at the same time and, and not having a complicated wiring solution they just all know that if they want to turn the lights on and off they talk to this device at a certain port number a certain um, IP address and it's got a very simple JSON like um, protocol for defining what pins you want to be what. Um, you can open multiple pins, close multiple pins, everything you come to expect from these new IoT di based devices. Very simple, very quick, very easy to get going. So I'm going to cut into the screen now and I'm just going to show you how quickly and how easy it is for me to program, for example, an IMS 2000 to talk to the device. Okay, now here we go. Now this is basically an IMS 2000's um, macro editor. And I've made a macro here called test RLY8 pulse one, which pulse for one second. Now, what's that made up of? Well, it's basically send a message to it to close a contact, wait one second, and open the contact again. So, just simply let's have a look at that. So, what that's really doing is basically talking to this device, which is just a raw device, um, talking text. And here we here we go. It's just a JSON type syntax um, relay one colon on return and that's all it does and then waits one second then it turns it off again and there we go we've pulsed the device now um, I am trying to get them to upgrade the software so you can actually just send one command such as relay one pulse for one second or a number of milliseconds like a thousand would be one second and that's probably going to come in later revisions and also hopefully we're going to get um, them to develop a very simple web based interface too so you could override it via the web. That's really the only restriction I see currently is that um, you really have to tell it into it and talk its, its um, basic 
um, JSON protocol to control the device. You can't really get any uh, information through a web page. You can though with this JSON protocol query the device so you know what pins are set to what um, and it works very efficiently. It seems to be very fast. So um, a simple web um, page to actually control the interface would be very simple to build if you were that way inclined. But hopefully they'll get that built into the unit later down the track. But still at the price it's hard to come by for such you know an industrial looking um, industrially created device like this is. Um, so yeah looks really good. Um, highly uh, um, recommend you have a look at it. Um, very cheap you can just get it on the web um, through a lot of shops. It's called the RLY-8. Anyway thanks for listening to James Garden the City Tech Geek. Bye for now.